Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. It's Joan Young here. Today I'm going to be showing you how to paint this acrylic landscape with a snowman and a cozy cottage, a fence, and we're going to use lots of fun colors today. Keep in mind if you don't have the colors I'm using, there are lots of alternatives. You don't necessarily need the specific colors and paints or even the brushes I'm using. So stay tuned and hit that subscribe and let's get started. Okay, so we're going to start this painting with a number 30 brush. I've got a few different brushes here, colors. I'll list everything below the video in the description box. We've got red, blue, black, turquoise, some warm yellow, and pink. And I'm going to get a little bit of water on my brush. I'm going to use a 9 by 12 canvas today that I've primed once with acrylic gesso and let dry. I'm just going to start coming in with my warm yellow. This is a luminous neon color, but you can make this by taking cadmium yellow, a little bit of... Uh, orange and even adding a little bit of white so any light orange will work for this and so I'm just going to spread it around starting in the middle of the canvas then without washing my brush off I'm going to go directly into that pink overlap and slightly pull it up and like specifically and purposely leaving it patchy looking and streaky looking like a sunset would be um, because it might be um, a lake or a river down below. I continued down the canvas with all those colors and it ends up looking really pretty as um, light reflecting on the snow afterwards. So it's uh, really fun to bring all your sky colors down into the bottom, what will be the foreground in your paintings as well. So I'm gonna take both the colors now, mix them together, and we're gonna just create so many different warm tones and shades here by doing this. So brush strokes back and forth, but then also up and down, side to side, little scoops here and there um, to create so many different brush strokes and directions. Now when I add a little bit of blue here, I'm gonna start making some really deep contrast happening. I'm just gonna very gently pull across a few lines, leaving a little area open, a little gap there, and then pulling down and flicking and very lightly side to side, back and forth. This is gonna be the darkest part of our paintings and shadows. And then to create a little instant forest, I'm gonna turn my brush the opposite way towards uh, the ceiling there and just pull and flick up. And it should look really soft and feathered like that and it should be easy to do. So if it is effortless, that means because you've got the right amount of paint and water and pressure you're using in your brush so practice it a few times ahead of time just take an old canvas or even a piece of cardboard or paper and practice practice all these techniques and brush strokes that I'm showing you guys if you want to really master them and and feel comfortable before letting that paint dry off and I'm not even washing my brush I'm just taking some of that white and I'm just gonna tap 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 for a little bit of frosty foliage on either side I really love using these silver brushes for creating um, soft looking um, foliage and, and bushes and all sorts of texture in my paintings and my landscapes. So notice how sometimes I'm alternating. So I'll be tap tapping for that texture and then I kind of take a few spots here and there, or pick a few spots here and there, I should say, where I softly pull and drag my brush to get a little bit more of an artsy and dreamy uh, blended look. A little pull and sweep here and there can add a lot of atmosphere to your paintings. I'll go over a few times, building up the layers, the snow, and the highlights here in the foreground. And then I'll take what's left in my brush, pick up a little bit more, and go over to the other side and pull and sweep up over those trees in the background. I'm going to come in with another layer here closer to the left side adding a little bit more and building up my little mounds of snow and bushes and anything that's going on here in the foreground and you can see how pretty it is having all of those warm tones in the background that we started off with kind of peeking through it really does bring the whole painting together I think I'm going to start coming in and picking a few areas where I'm going to add some trees that are more in detail. So without washing my brush off, I'm going to load up into my bright aqua green turquoise, a little bit of blue, phthalo blue, and white. I'm going to pull a few lines here and there and 
start my first tree. I'm going to have quite a bit of paint here on my brush. I like to wiggle and slide to load my brush up. I want to be using the tip of my brush. Pull up a line. Decide how tall you want your trees to be. I tend to make my trees the tallest and biggest on either side of my paintings. I like to create a lot of perspective in my paintings, so um, making it look like things are farther away, more towards the center. So just a little tap, 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 smaller at the top, getting wider towards the base of the tree. And before you know it, you've got a tree and it's a pretty minty, bluey color. We'll add some pastel um, highlights for our snow after. I'm gonna come in and do something a little bit different that I don't normally do. I won't go straight into my white. I'll be using tinted white. So I'll be making a light peachy color like the background for uh, the snow on our trees. And then I'll add a little bit more white later on. But I'm gonna add another tree here. This one's gonna be a little bit shorter. And I'll add another one in behind that after so you can decide and choose how many trees that you want to add in your painting. Um, but I'm going to try and squeeze in as many as I can on this little uh, 9 by 12 canvas. And washing that brush out and switching right over here to my number four filbert. I've got a smaller filbert here. I'm going to take a little bit of my Mars Black, a little bit of Phthalo Blue, blend those two together into a little bit of that teal blue color. So there's just a tiniest bit of white in there. And I'm going to go under where I want to create some more shadows and make it a little bit uh, more full of contrast, edgier looking uh, along the base of the river on the sides there wherever I've got some snowy snow covered bushes and this is just going to really create more atmosphere in this painting make it look more 3d and really help all those colors pop out so I'm going to slide my brush side to side and then I'll do uh, faint little gentle flicks uh, straight down. I want it to be kind of see-through so I don't want to cover up too much of the pretty colors, all those colors that we have in the river. So we'll just enhance a little bit and cr make it look more like uh, there's some gentle ripples in the water by doing that. Got a few options here for you guys. There's a few different mop brushes here. I've got an oval one and I've got a round one. I'm going to go with my oval one because I can have more control. It's a little bit narrower. These are both one inch. I'm going to tint my white with a little bit of blue, pink, even a little bit of that yellow in there. And I'm going to start tapping another fresh layer of snow on either side. And then I'll start coming in with the snow on the trees. Okay, after using this one inch brush, I'll be sure to wash it off. I'm gonna go back over to my number, my cute little number four filbert here. Take some of my yellow, my neon yellow, a little bit of white, and I'm gonna tap in more narrower areas here that are easier to get to by using this little brush. Now I'm also gonna do a little pull and curve, like little arches to make it look like snow covered stones or big rocks in the water. Um, so that's something that's really easy to do. A lot of people wonder and overthink painting rocks, but look at all you have to do is just do half little circles, low little arches like that, highlight on one side, and it's going to be naturally darker on the other because of the base that we have there that we started off with. So washing my brush out, I want to have a nice clean pink coral um, base for my snow that I'm going to add to my trees here. So white, pink, and yellow, or Either one with white is fine, or you could just do straight white over top, that's fine too. Um, I just wanted to really play up on all the colors. Colors make me happy, and I really love um, pastel tones, I think, especially in winter time. Winter is such a cold time of the year, but when you have those beautiful sunrises and sunsets, uh, you get uh, a lot of 
a lot of warmth, even though it's cold. You you get the warm colors like that, and they play off one another, the cool and and the cold and the warmth. So I think uh, it's really fun to paint winter scenes. That's why I paint so, so many of them. Um, so I'm going to continue along here, reloading my brush quite often. I don't want it to be too see-through. If you have the yellow um, see-through, it'll, like, if you don't have enough white base to add this snow, you want to have a ratio of 70% white, 30% either pink and yellow. If you have too much yellow, not enough white, or not enough pink, the yellow and that turquoise underneath are not going to make a pretty color. It'll be okay, it'll still look nice, but it, it's going to give you more of like a, a greeny, olivey green kind of a color. So picture what color it would make if you mix that turquoise with that yellow. Um, and I don't think that's very wintry, so I'm trying to stay away from that. I think it would be pretty for a springtime landscape. So I'm just going to keep going here, really loading up these trees. You can see and tell by how I'm painting that I'm just having a lot of fun. And that's something I want to touch on um, during my tutorials is remind you guys the right state of mind to be in. Yes, we can all get caught up and frustrated when we're learning something new, but we've got to remember that it's actually such a gift to be able to have the opportunity to learn something new. So try to enjoy it. Try to embrace it. And you're just going to keep better, getting better and better every time you make a mistake. It's okay. It just means you're getting closer to doing it right next time. Uh, it takes a long time, a lot of patience. But if it's something that you really enjoy and you're really passionate about, um, you're never going to stop. So keep going, guys. Paint as often as you can, as much as you can. Uh, with whatever you've got, no matter what colors you have, if you don't have what I've got, use whatever you have. That's how I started out. I hardly had anything when I first began painting, and I just found whatever I could around the house to paint with. So I'm going to start coming in with another layer of trees here. These ones are going to be lower, shorter, right? They're going to be smaller so that we cre create that perspective, make it look like they're getting farther away. And we've got these big, big trees on either side, and we're kind of more in the foreground and seeing those closer to us. I'm going to do the same technique, same colors, adding white first this time because I didn't do, I decided to go with a softer uh, tone this time without the, the turquoise underneath. And that's really fun to do too. If you've got a dark enough background where it will show up, you can go right in and just do your trees uh, full on white. You can always tint them after with other colors. Uh, I find winter scenes are really forgiving because um, snow is really messy. So the messier your trees look, the more snowy and wintry vibe you have, I find anyways. Um, a lot of people overthink how to how to paint snow. You paint, you add snow like you would add foliage, right? So say if you're adding your branches to your trees or you're adding moss and whatever stipple technique you're adding, uh, you're just going to choose a pastel color or just white and apply it the same way and there you go. Bam, it looks like snow. Uh, so don't ever overthink things. And if you guys have any questions at all, uh, don't hesitate to leave a comment below. I do get to my patrons quicker. However, I really appreciate all my patrons there on Patreon. So if you guys want to help support my channel and sign up, I'll leave a link below for that as well. You get early access, extra content, and you can be part of my monthly challenges where I have some wonderful prizes, including a full set of my neon paints that I use, the Holbein ones. Um, and some cash prizes and yeah, it's really, it's really worth your while to become a patron and I really, really appreciate it because it takes a lot of time and effort to make these videos and film and edit and all that stuff. Cause I love painting, but there's a whole other area there where I have to, uh, spend hours and hours creating my channel and videos for you guys. So I'm going to keep going here, making smaller and smaller trees, and then I'm going to add a sun right in the middle, and I'm going to have beautiful soft sun rays bursting out from the top in all directions. I thought this would be really, really pretty to add and have the reflection down below in the water using mostly uh, my neon warm yellow to begin it, and then I come in with a little bit of white, add a little bit of pink with the white as well, all those sky colors that I used, and then bright bright white right in the center of course where the sun is going to be the brightest so i'll add a few little reflections and sun rays down below in the water but not too too much and i'm um, being a little bit careful but not overly cautious if i happen to um, go over part of the white or the snow on my trees i let that happen i kind of like those um, little blending um, bits here and there where i accidentally pull in a little bit because i think it just looks really pretty and dreamy and artsy like 
But if you guys don't want any of that happening, make sure you take the time to dry your paintings off uh, before you come in with your sun and sun rays. I've got another one inch mop brush here and I'm gonna do another layer. I'm gonna really warm up the snow. So I'm gonna play up on my yellow and pink and white. Here you can see I've got more of a golden uh, yellow sunny color for my snow. Now I'm gonna take a little bit of pink and add more color and warmth to my snow. This is really fun. I just love all these colors so, so much. I know you guys <laughs> can tell how passionate I am about painting and you really can't hide it. And I'm like a big kid at heart. I just love art and I love sharing it with you guys. By the way, I want to say thank you for all of your support on my channel and for sharing your versions on our Facebook group. If you guys don't know about it yet, I've got a Facebook group where you can show off what you've learned uh, from my tutorials and your versions from my paintings on my channel. So I'll leave a link below for that. I'm going to just go over very lightly, dust over, kind of dry brush over my trees back there to make them look a little bit more soft and blurry like and then add a little bit more snow. I don't really need to, but I'm having fun with this brush. As you can see, it just makes the softest, prettiest, delicate uh, foliage and, and snow, little covered hills. And then with the leftover paint in my brush, I just blend it over the top of the canvas. Back over to a small filbert brush, I'm gonna take a little bit of white, yellow, and pink, mostly yellow, and I'm gonna go in between and add a little bit more saturation to uh, my sun in between the sun rays. Okay, so now I'm going to come in and start adding some objects in the foreground. I'm going to paint an old crooked fence and I'm going to take a combination a little bit of blue and black and my paint underneath might be a little bit uh, wet that's okay it'll just give me a few other little tones and mid-tones in between I'm going to take a little bit of yellow white into that blue and even a little bit of pink pretty much all the colors except for my red and my turquoise and I'm going to start pulling some lines smaller and shorter as they get to make it look like they're farther away. And then I'm just going to start making them a little bit longer and a little bit thicker and darker here right in the foreground. So we'll have that tallest one there that's going to end up being that pretty lamppost later on. At this stage of the painting, I didn't know. I want to mention that I don't have, I don't work from reference photos very often at all. I paint intuitively. I like to paint spur of the moment and paint whatever comes to my mind and just use my work off of my imagination. Um, so I think that keeps things fun and fresh on my channel and exciting for you guys as well as myself. I like after painting for so many years, um, I need to keep things exciting for myself. So I kind of like to challenge myself like that sometimes and I always recommend it. I think that it'll help you guys grow as artists and um, it's really good for your your brain actually to um, rely on it and and use your imagination if you can. So after pulling a few little lines, just for my boards, all crooked, nothing's perfectly straight in this, right? I like to add a lot of character to my fences and make them look old. I'm going to add some snowy highlights on here now. So I'm going to use those same colors and just wipe off the excess that I happen to pick up along the way. Um, the dark colors that I used for the fence post initially. So I'm going to just go in and kind of just reshape some of the, the fence posts here and boards and then alternate by adding some snowy highlights. So my white mixed with a little bit of pink and yellow. Uh, I'm not really sure about the background there. I might kind of just blend that out and add a little cabin, but we'll have to see. And as you can see, I decided to go with a cabin. So simple, simple lines, diagonal on either side. I always make my the front of my house, the diagonal line, roof line a little bit taller. And then I'm just going to pull a little triangle right underneath. I'm going to mix a bit of that blue and white, a little bit of yellow in there. 
and a little bit of pink. I make sort of a brown color for my uh, log. I'll make it a little log house, so I'll pull little lines if I can if it shows up, but it's far away so you don't have to worry too much about uh, detail. Uh, so kind of a, a fudgy brown color, I guess, and then I'll add a lot of white for the snow on top. You can tint it with the yellow and the pink as well, so everything's kind of flowing. All those colors are flowing, and, this, and the sunset colors are reflecting on all the snow in the painting. So on an angle, slight little scoops, pulling and dragging. It's still a little bit too wet to make it show up, so I'll either dry it off or I'll just wait and come back to it. I also like to add a little bit of white across, but make it really dark right underneath the roof line so you'll see me go back and uh, readjust that color maybe just come in with some uh, blue and black later on right underneath that roof line and then I'll just do little tiny dots and dabs for the notches of the logs where they join and meet on each corner of the house so right under there is where I want to have it really really dark under that roof line I'm going to add a little tiny line and then a flick diagonally off the side of it for the shadow and we've got a little chimney. I'm gonna come in and add some windows and a door. I'll use either this brush or a little liner brush and I'll just um, use some white to begin and then I'm gonna um, tint um, the color of my windows and the white with a little bit of this pink and yellow. And then I'll add a little bit of that color down below at the base where the light will be hitting and reflecting down on the snow right outside. So I'm going to use this brush, my little filbert brush, and quick little wiggles and squiggles and letting that paint just work out of my brush and disappear off into the sky to make it look like natural smoke coming out of the chimney. And now just making some gray, I'm going to add a little bit of blue to it. I want to blue up my gray so make it more of like a slate blue gray. I'm going to just scumble along the top, making this really patchy like. This is going to add just a little bit of shadows up to my in the top of my sky, making it more dramatic, um, creating a little bit more atmosphere, and making it feel a little bit more like nighttime. I'm going to soften because I know it's going to dry a little bit darker, acrylic paint always does. So what I'm doing, you can notice here, I'm just coming in with a little bit of white. I'm going to blend it in to that gray color, go over parts of the pink and the yellow, and if it ends up being a little bit too light, I know I can always come back and add a little bit more gray. Acrylic is really a forgiving paint to use, so it dries quickly. You can slow it down if you want by adding a medium and you can layer over as many times as you want. continue adding a little bit more white highlights here and there. I'm going to bring down um, the clouds a little bit lower, adding more white. I'm going to also uh, make my sun rays stand out a little bit more. Now that they've had time to dry and sit into the canvas a little bit, I know how much more I need to add to make them really stand out. I'll add a little bit more to the sun as well, make it nice and bright. And then I'm going to come in and start adding some more shadows on my fence post. So I'll be adding a little bit more blue and black, as well as some more snow on the roof of my little cabin and uh, some little windows. So that's what I'll be doing for the next few minutes. And if you guys want to have any questions answered or you just want to comment uh, feel free i encourage you guys to leave comments and questions below i love hearing from you i get really excited every morning when i have my cup of coffee to read all your comments and and uh answer your questions so feel free to do that i'm just going to wash my brush off now and have a nice clean base and add just a little bit more white here like i mentioned i really want to brighten it up and then tap a little bit as well off to either side of where the foliage is just to make everything back there look soft and bright. So that's what you really want to do with uh, things that are farther away and in the distance. You have to choose um, what you want to be the focal point and in fuller focus in your paintings. If you have the foreground as detailed 
and full contrast as you have the background, you're gonna have a flat painting. So that's something really, really important. I try to remember to mention that in all my videos, I like to pack them full of as much info as I can for you guys and little tips and tricks. Um, so you wanna listen to all my videos um, so you don't miss out on anything. Some of my videos are a little bit quieter um, and some of them are very, very soft spoken because uh, I'm very relaxed when I paint. And I think that, you know, I can't help that just comes through and I'm just a soft spoken person. Um, so make sure you have a headset. You can hear me much, much better if you have a headset on. Um, but yeah, so it's really important to um, choose one thing, one or two things in your paintings to have more in focus and then leave everything else a little bit softer, paler and blurrier or indistinct. So you can see here now that everything's a little bit drier, I can come in and add those soft highlights and details to finish off my cabin and make it look really cozy and like someone's living in there and they've got a little fire going. Um, so a little tinted white, again white with um, my peachy colors that I've got there, that neon yellow warm and a little bit of pink. I've also got a neon pink that I'm using, I think I mentioned that, um, but you really don't have to have neon colors to paint along with me guys it's just I really like them but I for years I painted scenes like this and I never used neon paint so you can just use pastel colors or any colors that you've already got What I want to do now is add a fresh coat of snow and highlights here on my fence. And once I'm done this, I'm going to start coming in with some more highlights and snow on my trees. I'll be um, adding some more trees there in the distance as well. And I'm going to be using um, quite thick amounts of white paint to really make um, the snow stand out a little bit more. But I'm making them soft colors too so that it doesn't compete too much with the contrast that we have in the foreground. So I'm using my one inch oval mop brush for this. This is by Princeton. And I'm just gonna tap, tap, tap straight in with my white. You can um, tint it and use a little bit of that pinky peachy color as well. Um, adding a little bit of white to those colors already on the tree, once it dries, will make it look even more delicate. So I'm going to come in and do the same thing on this tree and you can see how much more paint that I'm using. It's almost going to have a little bit of a texture once it dries and I really like that. Um, as I've grown uh, as an artist over the years, I used to paint really, really thin and I was a little bit more afraid back then to use a lot of paint. Um, and now I like to have that texture going on in my paintings and I use a lot more paint than I used to. So I'm going to switch over to my small, very small filbert brush. I've got my number one here. And I'm going to see how much paint that I've got on my brush. I'm going to reload very often. And I'm going to add little taps and kind of pull and slightly drag around using a, a little bit of a different approach this time when I'm adding this last layer of snow. So again, it's a little tap and wiggle and drag around. It's going to give that snow a little bit more of a rounded, lumpy look. So with a clean brush, I'm going to go into my Crimson Red. Um, there's lots of options for red, and I just decided to go with my beautiful Crimson Red today. And I'm going to make a little circle in the middle for the part of the bow and then a rounded triangle on either side. So I'm just keeping it really simple and basic and then I'll do a little wiggly line uh, for either tail of the ribbon. And I'm going to play around with my ribbon here a little bit because I do want to come in and add a wreath. So I may cover up part of this but there's still lots to learn. So I'll add highlights with a little bit, mixing a little bit of white with my red and then I'll add a little bit of depth by um, adding a little bit of black or thalo blue in with my red for where I want to have those darkest shadows.
With a clean brush, I'm gonna use my titanium white and a little bit of my yellow warm, and I'm gonna start my lamp. So I'm gonna just create a little rectangle or square right here, and then add a little bit more white to make it really, really nice and bright and glow. It's time to come in and start working the base of my lamp. I'm going to take black and I'm going to do a little line right underneath and then I'm going to pull down and little diagonal angled lines on either side that go wider at the top and then narrower down towards the base. I'll make a little triangle for the top of it and then I'll add a little tap and a dab for the top of the triangle as well. And it's always fun in a winter painting, I find, to add a little bit of snow or frost on my lamp posts. It's optional, but it's something you can do if you want, just by adding some white with whatever color you want. You could use blue or teal or the warm uh, colors that we have going on here. I just added a couple little lines in the lamp for some of the iron work, and they're kind of blurry looking. I want it to be that way. I don't want to have it too, too black. Um, all the way through. I like it to look a little bit soft and frosty looking, so more of a dark gray color, I guess you could say. I'm just adding a few more highlights here to make this ribbon stand out, but pretty soon I'm going to be covering up part of it when we come in with um, our wreath, and I'm going to add a few little snowy highlights here on the top of my lamp post, uh, just using a bit of white. Um, I'd like to mention if I haven't already that when you're using like peachy colors like this a really nice complementary color to use is violet any kind of bluey violet color um, I'm actually all out of my blue violet and that's why I'm not using it today in this painting I wonder if you guys noticed that I'm waiting to get some more in right now but it does give me the opportunity to play up on turquoise as well because red and green are complementary. And of course, we've got the turquoise in this or uh, the pink, which is from red. It's from the red family and the turquoise. So the pink and the turquoise go really well together too. Okay, it's time to start painting our wreath and I just squeezed out a little bit of my light olive green. I'm going to mix a little bit of black, a little bit of blue, even a little bit of gray up in there. And then I'm going to tap, tap, tap for my wreath. So I want to create that texture and so I'm going to do that by just doing these little taps. So you can use a mini mop brush, stipple brush, or a little filbert brush like I'm using here. Even a round brush, any brush you have, use it uh, in a tapping brush stroke um, method. The only one that would be a little bit too hard to use would be the fan brush, I would say, but other than that, there's a lot of options out there, and I'm going to show you how you can make those uh, little brush strokes by using a little mini mop brush here as well, so I'm giving you guys a few options. So with a little bit of turquoise, white, and those greens, just tap, 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 make it stand out and be a little bit more three-dimensional while adding the cool minty tone to it and some frost. So I'm going to play up on that just a little bit more, add a little, few little bits of snow here and there, making it look a little bit heavier in some areas, and have it kind of just match how everything else is snow covered in this painting.
So as you can see, we kind of lost our ribbon. <laughs> so we're gonna do this ribbon again. And I'm gonna go right back into my crimson red and I'm gonna paint my ribbon exactly how I did before. Only this time, I'm gonna edge the sides of the ribbon in gold. So I'm gonna make it look like it's shiny gold by taking my light uh, warm yellow and with a little bit of white in there sometimes, I'll kind of just wiggle it around and just apply a highlight of it here and there on the ribbon. And you'll see how pretty and delicate it looks. You could actually use, if you have gold metallic gold paint, you could use that. Um, but I find with the luminous yellow warm and white, it, it really does have that gold look. You won't get the same shimmer as you would if you used metallic. And I'm gonna add my warm colors now, the warmth to the windows. What a difference that makes. And I like to play up on the warmth in the lantern too. So towards the top of the lantern uh, for the light, I like to play up on my um, peach and yellow and a little bit of pink in there. Keeping it nice and bright white very in the very center though. So my white is kind of faded on my sun and I'm going to come back and do another highlight. I'm going to make my sun rays a little bit uh, longer and thicker and kind of just play up on them a little bit more in general. So you'll see me work at these a little bit. Now I'm going to come in and add that beautiful gold edging on my ribbon. So I've got a, my Micro Mini number 10 uh, liner brush here, and I'm using quite a bit of that neon yellow warm. Remember, you don't have to have this neon color. Just take any yellow, mix it with a bit of orange and white, and it'll give you the same, just about the same uh, color. So I'm just going to go around and pick a few areas here very delicately, barely touching, little wiggles, gentle pressure, reload your brush often. If you wanna to wait to, for your ribbon to dry, that would make it a lot easier too, but I'm too impatient because I'm having too much fun while I'm painting. So I just have learned over the years how much paint to use when I'm painting wet on wet and how much pressure to use. It's time to start painting our snowman. I'm gonna use a mini mop brush here or a filbert brush. Either one will work and I'm gonna make a bluish grayish color just so that we have something um, darker there for our base in order for our snowman to really stand out. So we'll do this darker base first and just paint like a regular snowman, head on top, smaller belly, and then a larger uh, base for the bottom. And then I'm just gonna tap, tap, tap with a little bit of white inside, giving it that sort of snowball texture, that rough snow texture look. Um, and that's just how I like to paint my snowman, but there's so many different ways of painting snowman. Um, this is just one way of doing it, so follow along if you guys want. Um, but yeah, just a light little stipple, and I'm gonna make it look a little bit more stipply like by <laughs> taking my mini mop brush here, uh, fresh white, and just tap, 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 on each one, leaving an outline in that gray color, and then it'll really look 3D and stand out from the background. I'm gonna give our snowman a face by using a little liner brush, and I'll add a few little dots and dabs for the buttons and uh, his eyes, and then I'll be using my yellow, maybe a little bit of orange and pink just to make more of a darker carrot color. And of course, I'll be adding a bright red scarf and adding a little bit of snow kind of covering the base there. So it looks like he's kind of in the snow and the snow is kind of um, around him. It just makes him a little bit sturdier um, in that snow. 
So I'm gonna take some red, a little bit of white, kind of a brownish color, make more of a brownish color, balancing out with some green, green and red together. And I'm gonna start the base of his scarf with that color. So you can just, you can go right in with red if you want. You could do black first, approach it however you like. I wanted to make it more of like a burgundy kind of a color. So I just decided to go with this at first. So I do a scoop around his neck across and then a pull, gently press and wiggle for the ends of his scarf. I'll then come in and make it red after. I'll add a few little twigs here for his arms. I'm gonna give him some mittens, so a little oval and then a little uh, dab on the inside for his thumb. I'll do the same thing on that side. And again, just some little dots and dabs for um, the buttons. And I'm not gonna do uh, little dots for his mouth this time. Sometimes I do with my snowman's, but my snowman. But this time I'm just gonna um, actually just paint on a simple smile. And I'm gonna paint his carrot nose uh, with this color first. That way when I add the highlights, um, they'll stand out more. So, cause his uh, face is light. To begin with so if I added highlights on top of a highlight it wouldn't stand out so we need that darker base first in order to have a shadow and I'll be adding a hat I'll be painting it black and I'll be adding a red kind of a ribbon across um, the base of his hat to match his mittens and his scarf and it's really really easy painting snowmen you can give them as much character as you want and add little things it's fun sometimes to add maybe like um, uh, a string of lights or a present in their hand. You can have them holding something. I've got quite a few snowman tutorials. So have a look through my winter and Christmas playlist if you're um, needing some inspiration or some ideas or want to learn how to paint some other things. Um, I'm just going to add a little bit of gray down at the base just to give him a bit of a shadow. I'm going to take a scoop of my crimson red paint, cover the scarf in that, and then go right into my black with my little liner brush and do a line across right above his head. And I'm going to give it a little bit more character and kind of have it curve up on either side. And then a big square on the top or kind of a rectangle. Um, making a little square or rectangle can change it quite a bit. So you might want to practice that and decide ahead of time which way you want to go with it. And I'm going to add a little bit black here and there on the scarf just to add more depth. I'm going to add a little bit of snow and some highlights on his hat. It's a little bit wet, so my highlights aren't showing up as much, but I want it to look kind of shiny and shimmery. So I'm adding a bit of white and kind of scooping, scooping and pulling across, kind of dragging with my brush. And I will be adding a little bit of snow on the very top of his hat by dabbing a bit of white. And you can tint your white, like I mentioned earlier, with all those warm colors that we've got going on. I'm pulling a little bit of red there for the ribbon across his hat. adding a little bit of red here and there on the scarf, the hat, and the mittens, making him all match, all his accessories match. I'm going to go with a clean brush right into, directly into my tube of neon yellow warm and pull that across his nose for his carrot to make it really stand out, be nice and bright. The leftover paint on my brush, I'm going to scumble over um, onto his body and maybe the snow below and give it a warm glow as well. So 
So I'm just gonna clean up the lines a little bit, add a little bit more highlights and shadows to everything. Um, it's optional at this point. The painting is pretty much done, but I wanna play up a little bit more on my sun rays in the background. So after I add a little bit more highlights here to his body, I'm gonna work a little bit more on um, the background. So I hope you guys enjoy watching the rest of this video. Don't leave yet because there's still more to see. I'm just gonna add a little bit of snow here on the top of his hat um, and just kind of readjust that. I want to bring back a little bit more black but add also have just a little bit of snow there. Um, but this is such a real such a fun painting to do. I enjoy painting winter landscapes, Christmassy ones, but I have tons of videos and tutorials for you guys to look through all seasons. I've got animals, portraits, figures, lots of different stuff. So um, paint along to anything you want. Share it with your family and friends. Hope you guys learn a ton and get inspired. Please feel free to subscribe to my channel for more. And I'll see you guys all soon in my next video. Thanks again so much for all of your support. Bye!